Here I am back with my little mini PC. So this one I got from AliExpress and I've been really happy with it. I've been using it for three weeks now. It's really powerful. The most powerful I've looked at, of course, with the Coffee Lake Core i7 8750H. This thing, six cores and it has the 12 threads. It really flies. It has two NVMe uh, slots in there, so M.21s and of course, this means we could actually run an external GPU, which you see I have right in front of me, and it works really good. So a lot of people suggested that idea to me because I was always under the impression that if it's only gonna be PCI times four, and it should be 16, the card's gonna be crippled. I expected the performance to be down a huge sum, but as you see in this video, a little spoiler alert, you're gonna lose around about 10 to about 12% performance. Because of this, we're not gonna have the bandwidth you get it of course using a time 16 slot but in some instances with some games if you look at it on the internet there's a lot of other people cover it as well you're only going to lose about five percent now this particular adapter i picked it up from aliexpress it's called the adt and it will be useful for things like this for many pcs that have two pcie m.2 slots or an old laptop perhaps you're using a sata 3 drive with an ssd in there and you don't mind giving up a pci slot and it has a weak GPU in it, then you can use something like this here. It's shipped out in a brown box with an anti-static bag, and it comes with a power cable. We've got the supports here for when you place the card in here. That's just to screw it down, lock it in place, and there were no instructions included. My graphics card of choice for this video is an EVGA GeForce GTX 1060. Now this has the six gigabytes of RAM, so slightly faster than the three gigabyte version. And why I got this card is because of its small size and I picked it up for, I feel, a very good price, 150 euros off eBay. It is, of course, used. So the version I have is called the R43S. G. Now the length of the cable is 25 centimeters. You can see right here that's our M.2 connector. There is a 50 centimeter version as well. So you want a longer cable because if you see that really isn't that long but I'm only connecting this up to a mini PC and I don't want to have a huge separation between the mini PC and then the card. Now the build quality of this it seems really quite good. It seems very similar to your motherboards out there you get for PCs. And I can't really fault it with the components they have used. Now it does say R3G on here, but it's not the R3G model. It seems to be that all the motherboards will state that on there. Now along the top here, there are three switches and a jumper. And I'm not too sure if I need to use this because there were no instructions included in the box. I think you need to refer to the manufacturer's website for further information on that. But I'll see how I go. On the bottom of the PCB, you will find these four solid rubber feet. So that's going to support the weight of the graphics card. So you can use those huge, heavy ones. I don't see it being a problem. And of course, it won't slip or anything being rubber. And then for our power inputs, we have our typical PCU power supply. So if you're going to be driving a very powerful graphics card, for example, an RTX 2080 or the NVIDIA 1080 Ti, something like that, then this is the one you have to use because the Dell power supply I'm using, I think it maxes out about 200 watts only, which uh, I'm well within that, of course, with the GTX 1060. So to power this external GPU, I'm going with the cleaner option here. So this is 180 watts max. It is an 8-pin Dell DA-2 series adapter. So this is going to keep things a lot cleaner. I won't have to have a power supply unit on my desk looking messy with all the cables everywhere. I know you can get the modular ones, but they're a little bit more expensive. I picked this up secondhand and it only cost me around about 20 euros. So I'm just keeping things on the cheap here. Okay, so you can see that this card fits in there great because of its small size. This is a tiny GTX 1060, this model. So M.2 connections right here are reinforced. So I think this is another M.2 right here, but you can't see it. Or well, it just goes straight into the motherboard. But it's all reinforced around there. Now why I got this version? Because it is M.2 PCIe and times four. So in theory, 32 gigabits per second. Now the great thing about this little mini PC, apart from the fact that it's got that powerful Core i7-8750H in here, is that it has two M.2 NVMe slots in it. So I don't have to give up one of them and just go to slower SATA 3. And the other thing too is around the side we have vents. So the cable will be easily routed just through that gap there. No mods required. Unlike laptops, a lot of laptops you have to do a bit of a mod there. You have to cut a little gap. 
if you're going to be running an external GPU setup. And now with the bottom lid back on my mini PC, you can see how that fits the cable perfectly through that gap with no damage or anything. You don't need to mod or cut or do anything. So that's great. It worked out really nice. So here we are. It was very easy to set up. So all I did is just connect that Dell plug, the 8-pin one, into it, turned on my mini PC, installed the drivers, did a reboot, and everything's working fine. And it's been fine for now three days. This is day number three. And... No problems with stability, no crashes whatsoever here. So most importantly, we want to have a look at this. So what is it running at? PCIe times 4. That is fine. So that's good. We're getting the maximum bandwidth that we can expect, of course, from that M.2 PCIe slot. So that is great. There's some more stats up here with Q to Z, as you can see. So what are we losing performance-wise? This, I know was something that weighed heavily on me. I thought, you know, it's just going to cripple the card, isn't it? Going from times 16 to times 4 with the interface there. But you know what? It's only about 5 to 10%. I've run a few benchmarks. I don't want to go crazy with benchmarks because this is really just about the adapter, how it works, not the performance of the GPU here. So first up, I wanted to show you, if you haven't seen my full review of this particular mini PC, that for its size, the size of about a PSU, power supply unit, for a tower PC, so it's tiny. Look at the power of this. So single core score, 5,000, multi-core score, 21,000. This is really good. Now, I don't game on this mini PC at all. It's only for video editing, so I wouldn't normally run something like this. So here are some benchmarks. Focus on, of course, the graphics score. That's what you want to look at. Fast rate 1, score is about 10%. This card here, my EVGA, the GeForce GTX 1060, the superclock version. So it was factory overclocked, and I've applied a little bit of an overclock myself too, which I will show you. It's only minor because it's already overclocked out of the box, so you can't really do too much. So memory's gone up 500 megahertz, core clock 40, and the power limit percent is up 16%. So just very minor little tweaks there, just to help offset what we're missing out, of course, on it running just PCIe 3 times 4. And here's Fire Strike Extreme graphics score. So I did some calculations that I'll show you in a second just to show you the kind of difference that we are getting. In fact, I'll just swap over to that in a second. And you can see here now Time Spy. So these scores, I mean, they're really, I'm actually impressed. They're really good. We're not losing too much. I thought we we're going to be. 50% down, it's going to cripple the, the card performance. But no, 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 not at all. That's not happening here. And here is our super position benchmark score. So normally you get about 6,300, 6,400 uh, from this card or 6,200. So there's a difference there of about, I think it's 4 to 5%. It is really not a lot. And so I'll briefly take a look at exactly what kind of a hit we are taking with the, the lack of PCI times 16. So if you take a look, this score here, graphics score 10,173. Now I do have a review up here. This is from Hexus, and you can see right here, okay. So they got 11,355. So I've done a quick calculation here on the difference, the percent. So we are losing approximately, you could say, just round that up, 12% performance. So I have now Witcher 3 set up in 1080p and it's on the high setting, high preset, just to put the resolution of course there up to 1080p. And yeah, gameplay is perfectly fine. Look, it's hovering around 65, 70 frames per second. So you're going to have no issues. And if you decide to go with something like, I don't know why you would though, an RTX 2060 or 2080, then of course you can expect even better frame rate here. So 1080p gaming with this little EVGA GPU is fine. And I like the fan noise. And I like the fact that, of course, it's just so much smaller and fits nice and neat. So if you are planning to get one of these mini PCs, it has a very common CPU in it, that Coffee Lake 8750H. It's in a, a lot of gaming laptops. And it's powerful. It can handle every single game just fine. So it's not going to be a bottleneck at all, this CPU. Now to really test the PCI lane bandwidth and what we're going to really lose. So this is my GTX 1080 Ti in my desktop PC. So it's a Core i7 
1700K overclocked to five gigahertz. I've run Fire Strike Ultra, and as you can see the result here, so focus on that graphic score. So 7063. I'm gonna pull the card now out of my desktop PC that I typically normally use for gaming and put it in now the external GPU adapter Okay, so here's the result, and it's actually a lot better than I expected. So a graphic score of 6,472, and that gives us a difference there of only 8.7%. So it's a lot smaller margin than I thought. Okay, so there we go. It works really well. So if you have a rather weak GPU and say an old laptop, you don't mind doing a bit of a mod to it, then you could add an external GPU like this one, and you're going to lose about 12% and even a minimum sometimes of only about 5% in certain games. Now there are plenty of benchmark videos out there, please do check them out, don't just take my word for it. Check out videos that put PCIe times 16 versus PCIe times four, and you will see the same kind of trend there. You're losing about 10%, sometimes 5%, and in this instance it was up to almost 12% there. So the adapter works well, the build quality is great, I would like an external housing for it, uh, for me, the power solution is good using that Dell power adapter. It is big, but I can get it out of the way off my desk and just have it on the floor. But if you were going to put, for example, a 1080 Ti in this, then of course you're going to need to use a proper uh, PC power supply there. It's going to deliver a lot more power than the 180 watts that I have from that Dell one. Now the main con with this, you can't just disconnect it. So I've got to open the lid back off again, unscrew it, and then I could disconnect it and just have it running as my normal mini PC here, which I really like. Now, for me, it's not a problem. I mean, I won't be gaming on this mini PC ever. It's just for editing videos. I think I mentioned that a couple of times in this video. So if you wanted to do that, make it a little bit more practical, there are PCIe extenders that you can get, and then you'd just be able to simply unplug it. Now, what I can do too with this is not power it on. So just unplug it, or unplug it better from the socket, and it won't run the GPU then, it just goes back to the uh, integrated GPU. I've just got to swap over my HDMI cable there, or then the DisplayPort cable, so that is fine. Now if you haven't seen the review of this right here, it's the mini PC that I got. So weak GPU, but other than that, it's a super powerful little monster. Then please do check out that review, there's a link in the description for that, and also right up here too with the card. And to the guy in the comments, I know you're posting it, yes, for the money that you'd spend on all of this, you can build yourself an ITX, mini ATX, or something like that, with probably a better GPU, and maybe even a faster uh, CPU than this one right here, because this is a bare bones, this is 400 US, the card cost me 150 euros, the adapter is 80 US, the power supply was about 25, so yeah, you do your maths there, it's only really for the sake of this video that I'm doing it, but again, as I mentioned, you've got an old laptop, you want to put a powerful GPU connected up to it, this thing right here is very good. Thanks a lot for watching, please do like and subscribe for more content.